in some great detail of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Adam with sin and disobedience. And from the wisdom of Allah, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Adam was tested with sin so that he would not fall into what is more hated than sin. What is more hated than sin? Is what comes in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam well, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned al-muhlikat and the things that destroy a person. From that is a person being astonished with their self, a person being conceited. A person being conceited will destroy them. Lawla until the nibu la dhahab Allahu biku. If it was not for the fact that you, and if you did not commit sin, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do away with you, then He would bring about another people who will commit sin and seek forgiveness from Him so that He may forgive them. Allah loves to forgive His servants, and He loves to pardon His servants. Allah loves His mercy, and He loves His forgiveness, and He loves His clemency, and He loves His tawbah, His granting of uh, repentance to His servants. And in order for those things that happen, then the human beings must fall into shortcomings and seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to repair what is wrong with them, and to cure them of their sicknesses and so on and so forth. And so there are many wisdoms, the scholars have mentioned, and he pertaining in these sorts of matters, and he, of the adversary getting the upper hand, and from the adversary getting the upper hand is a shaitan, justifying sin and disobedience to the person. So the person, he is humbled when he sees his vulnerable condition, when he realizes that he is in dire need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the believers always had the upper hand, were always dominant over their adversaries, and then they would neglect the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may find themselves in a state of conceitedness. And on the other hand, if they were always defeated, and if they were always conquered, and if they always had the lower hand, then there would never be anyone to establish the religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He causes the situation of the Muslims to alternate between a da'af wal quwa between weakness and strength between weakness and strength he says rahimullah ta'ala wala kanat lil haqi dawlatun faqtadat hikmatu ahkam al hakimin an sarrafahum bayna ghalabihim tara wa kawnihi maghlubina tara fi idha ghulibu tadarra'u ila rabbihim so they alternate by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between being the victors and being conquered or being defeated. And when they find themselves defeated and overcome tadarra'u ila rabbihim then they, humili- then they humbly with humility turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa anabu ilayhi wa anabu ilayhi and they return back to what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khadha'u lahu wa nkasaru lahu wa tabu ilayhi and they repent from their sins wa idha ghalabu aqamu deenahu wa sha'airahu and when they go back to being to having the upper hand having some strength and some power some prestige and some wealth and so on and so forth and they are grateful and they establish with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, they establish his religion. And the identifying hallmarks of his religion. And they call to Allah, ordering the good, and forbidding the evil. And they strive against the enemies of the religion and the enemies of their Lord. And they come to the aid of the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْهَا Likewise from those reasons that are clear أَنَّهُمْ لَوْ كَانُوا دَائِمًا مَنْصُورِينَ غَالِبِينَ قَاحِرِينَ 
لدخل معهم ما ليس قصده الحق ومتابعة الرسول that if they were always victorious and if they always had the upper hand then they would enter into their ranks those who became Muslim for something other than Islam those who entered into their ranks for a purpose that is not the religion itself nor to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam people jumping on the bandwagon right فَإِنَّهُ يَنْضَافُ إِلَى مَنْ لَهُ الْغَلَبَةُ وَالْعِزَّةِ for indeed people like to jump on the bandwagon of those who have prestige and dignity and honor and might and status and so on and so forth وَلَوْ كَانُوا مَقْحُورِينَ مَغْلُوبِينَ دَائِمًا لَمْ يَدْخُلْ مَعَهُمْ أَحَدٍ but at the same time, if the Muslims were all defeated and all weak and all in a pitiful condition at all times, then no one would enter into Islam. No one would enter into Islam. فَاقْتَضَتْ الْحِكْمَةُ الْإِلَهِيَّةِ And so the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates and كَانَتْ لَهُمَ الدَّوَلَةُ تَارَةً وَعَلَيْهِمْ تَارَةً That sometimes... They're like this and sometimes they're like that. Sometimes they have power and wealth and prestige and honor. Sometimes they have the opposites of those things. فَيَتَمَيَّزُ بِذَلِكَ بَيْنَ مَنْ يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَمَنْ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ مُرَادٌ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا وَالْجَاهِ To distinguish. So as to distinguish and to make clear those who are sincere in wanting Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who don't want anything except for the dunya and status. وَمِنْهَا This is all from the eighth point. Likewise from those wisdoms. Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُحِبُّ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ He loves from His servants تَكْمِيلَ عُبُودِيَّتِهِمْ عَلَى السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ that they complete their worship of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times and in bad times, in ease and in difficulty. وَفِي حَالِ الْعَافِيَةِ وَالْبَلَاءِ And that they fulfill their worship of Him in times of well-being and times of affliction. وَفِي حَالِ إِدَالَتِهِمْ وَالْإِدَالَةِ عَلَيْهِمْ And in a circumstance where they, where the tables have been turned in their favor or turned against them. فَلِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَى الْعِبَادِ فِي كِلْتَ الْحَالَيْنِ عُبُودِيَّةٌ بِمُقْتَضَى تِلْكَ الْحَالِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both types of scenarios has عُبُودِيَّة that is rightful for him, that he is deserving of in accordance to the situation. لَا تَحْصُلُ إِلَّا بِهَا And the only way to bring out this worship from his servants is to test them in such a way. وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ الْقَلْبُ بِدُونِهَا And there is no way for the heart to be righteous if it is not tested with both ease and difficulty. With both ease and difficulty. كَمَا لَا يَسْتَقِيمُ الْأَبْدَانِ إِلَّا بِالْحَرِّ وَالْبَرْدِ وَالْجُعِ وَالْعَطَشِ وَالْطَعَبِ وَالنَّصَبِ Just as the body will not be correct and healthy and sound, if it is always comfortable and never does anything. What sets the body right and gets a person in good shape requires heat and cold and hunger and thirst and fatigue and hard work and toiling wa afdadiha and the opposites of those things of comfort and rest and enjoying oneself and so on and so forth. فَتِلْكَ الْمِحَنُ وَالْبَلَايَ شَرْتٌ فِي حُصُولِ الْكَمَالِ الْإِنسَانِ These sorts of tests and hardships are a prerequisite, they are a condition for a person to reach human perfection. وَالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ الْمَطْلُوبَةِ مِنْهُ And the desired righteousness that is accompanied by being tested in such a way. وَوُجُودِ الْمَلْزُومِ بِدُونِ لَازِمِهِ مُمْتَنِعَ And it is impossible for this to happen without this process of cause and effect. وَمِنْهَا 
أن امتحانهم بإدالة عدوهم عليهم يماحسهم ويخلصهم ويحذبهم From that is that when the people of truth and sunnah when they are tested by their enemy having a temporary momentary position over them testing them abusing them hurling insults at them, so on and so forth. And it seems as though the adversaries of the truth and the people of falsehood have the upper hand, have more resources, have more wealth, have more numbers, these sorts of things. And the people of sunnah, and they are lacking in those matters. The people of truth are lacking in those matters. That these sorts of tests purify the ranks and purify the individuals. وَيُخَلِّصُهُمْ وَيُحَذِّبُهُمْ And discipline them and refine them. كما قال الله تعالى في حكمة إدالة الكفار على المؤمنين يوم أهد As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said pertaining the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the disbelievers the upper hand against the believers on the day of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and verses 139 through 144 of Surah Ali Imran. Do not be, do not feel humiliated, and do not be saddened, and do not act pitiful and futile. While you are truly alone, those who are uppermost. While you are truly those who are the highest and who have superiority over the disbelievers, in kuntum mu'minin, if you are truly believers, in yamsaskum qarhun, faqad masal qawma qarhun mithlu. Although you have been stricken with an injury, then those people have likewise been stricken with injury, meaning on the day of Badr. Meaning on the day of Badr. وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Allah says, and this is how we cause the days to alternate between the people. Sometimes you will have the upper hand, sometimes you will have the lower hand. Sometimes you will be in a situation of ease, sometimes you will be in a situation of difficulty. Sometimes you will be in a situation of being the victor, and sometimes you will be in a situation where you have lost. وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can show those who have truly believed and take martyrs from amongst you. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the oppressors. وَلَيُمَحِّسَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may purify those who believe. And so that He may Cause the disbelievers to perish. Am hasibatum and tadkhulul jannah, or did you think that you would be able to enter the paradise? Walamma yaglam illahu ladina jahadu jahadu minkum, wa yaglam sabirin. And when would Allah subhanahu wa taala have shown from His knowledge those that strive and struggle from amongst you? And when would Allah subhanahu wa taala have Known and shown from his knowledge as Sabirin, and he those that were truly patient. وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَلْقَوْهُ And indeed, you had previously longed for death before having experienced actual fighting. فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُوهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Meaning in the time where the Muslims were ordered, because they were weak in numbers and didn't have the physical resources, the material resources to be able to even defend themselves. In a time where they were in iltihad, in a situation where they were being persecuted and tormented by the disbelievers, and so on and so forth, they had wished for the opportunity to have lost their lives in fighting the disbelievers who were harming their brothers and sisters in faith. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ النَّوْتِ You used to wish for death before you actually had a liqa and either meeting with your enemy upon the battlefield. He says, 
Azza wa Jal Fakarraitumuhu. Now you have seen it. Now it is right here. You are witnessing it. Wa antum tandurun and you looked right at it. Wa ma Muhammadun illa Rasulun. Qad khalat min qablih al Rasul. And Muhammad is nothing but a messenger. And messengers have passed before him. Afa immata o kutil and qalab tu ma'ada aqabikum. If he was to die or be killed, would you turn back on your hills? وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا And whoever turns back on their hills does not harm Allah in any way whatsoever. وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ شَاكِرِينَ And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards those who are truly grateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those verses that are applicable in general to the situation of the believers, situations of strength or of weakness, no matter what their situation is. He has mentioned a number of wisdoms of why he subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the believers in various ways. Al-Asl Tasir, the ninth of the eleven usul, fundamentals or rules or guidelines for dealing with trials and tests. Annahu subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّمَا خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth وَخَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتِ and He created life and death وَزَيَّنَ الْأَرْضِ بِمَا عَلَيْهَا and He beautified the earth and placed what is of a benefit for us upon it He did all of that to test His servants to test His creatures to test mankind. لِبْتِلَاءِ عِبَادِهِ وَمْتِحَانِهِمْ لِيَعْلَمَ مَنْ يُرِيدُهُ مَنْ يُرِيدُ مَا عِنْدَهُ مِمَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا So that he could show and distinguish those who desire and intend his reward subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to those who only want this world and the beauty of this world. Then he mentions a number of verses from the Qur'an in this regard. فَالنَّاسُ إِذَا أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمَ الرُّسُلُ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ When the messengers were sent to people, then their response was one of two matters. إِمَّا أَنْ يَقُولَ أَحَدُهُمْ آمَنْتُ أَوْ لَا يُؤْمِنْ Either a person would positively respond to the invitation to the invitation of the Prophet or the messenger that had been sent. He will say, I have believed, or he would not. Quite simply. Or he wouldn't believe and would persist upon wicked behavior and disbelief. And both of these people must go through further tests. Both of these people, the believers and the disbelievers, must be tested further. فَأَمَّا مَنْ قَالْ As for the believer who says, آمَنْتُ That I have believed, فَلَا بُدَ أَنْ يَمْتَحِنُهُ الرَّبُّ وَيَبْتَلِيهِ Then it is unavoidable for him except that he would be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tried by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatabayyan so that it may become abundantly clear hal huwa sadiqun fi qawlihi whether he was truthful in his statement and saying I have believed O kathib or whether he was disingenuous and not truthful in his claim to iman in kana kathiban raja'a ala aqibayhi if he was disingenuous, if he had ulterior motives, if he had da'af, there were things that were more loved to him than Allah and the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the person would turn back on his heels. وَفَرَّ مِنَ الْإِمْتِحَانِ And as soon as he was tested, he would flee from the test. كَمَا يَفِرُّ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ As though he was fleeing from the punishment of Allah. He would flee from being tested as though he was fleeing from the punishment of Allah. وَإِنْ كَانَ صَادِقًا ثَبَتَ عَلَى قَوْلِهِ However, if the person is truthful 
and his claim, then he will be firm and resolute in adhering to his statement that I have believed in Allah and the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَمْ يَزِدْهُ الْابْتِلَاءُ وَالْامْتِحَانِ إِلَّا إِمَانًا عَلَى إِمَانِهِ And his being tried and tested would only increase him in faith. And his being tried and tested would only increase him in faith. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابِ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا that when the believers saw the Ahzab, Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 22, when they saw the Ahzab, the confederation that had gathered from the families of Quraysh and from the tribes of the Bedouins that had come against the Prophet Sallallahu from Ghatfan and the other tribes that had assembled against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the point that the believers had to dig a trench in the front in the, in the front of the city of Al Medina to protect themselves from being raided and invaded. That when they saw that they had been surrounded, they saw the Ahzab and they saw this army that had amassed to come against them. Qalu, the believers said, This is what Allah and His Messenger promised. Wa sadaq Allahu wa rasuluh. And Allah and His Messenger were truthful. وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا That it only increased them in Iman, and it only increased them in Taslim, and their surrendering and complying with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ So they increase in surrendering themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complying the religion of Allah, and they increase in Iman, with this tasdeeq and this inqiyad, the core of their faith was reinforced by being tried and tested with the test that was the greatest test that they had ever seen in their lives. Where it was feared that the city would be destroyed and the believers would be put to the sword and their wives and children would be taken into slavery and so on and so forth. They said, Hada, that this is what? Allah and His Messenger promised us, وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا They increase in tasdeeq and they increase in inqiyad, and the core of their faith was reinforced by this tremendous test. وَأَمَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ فَإِنُّهُ يُمْتَحَنُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ بِالْعَذَابِ As for the one who, does not, who did not believe, who rejected the call of the Messenger, and he will be put to further trial and test, in a way that will not benefit him. He will be tormented and tested in the hereafter with the hellfire. And this is the greatest of the two tests. This is the greatest of the two tests. And he, the person who is tormented and punished in the hereafter as a trial for them because they rejected the Messenger وسلم, while alive in this world. هَذَا وَإِنْ سَلِمَ مِنْ امْتِحَانِهِ بِعَذَابِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَصَائِبِهَا He says, and this is, if he had been spared from being tried and tested with punishment and calamity in this world for having rejected the messengers. عَلَيْهِمْ أَصْرَاتُ وَسَلَامُ وَعُقُوبَتِهَا لَتِي أَوْقَعَهَ اللَّهُ بِمَنْ لَمْ يَتَّبِعْ رُسُولَهُ وَعَصَاهُمْ and if he had been spared from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah cast upon those who refuse to follow the messengers and those who openly defy the messengers. فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْمِحْنَةِ فِي هَذِهِ الدَّارِ وَفِي الْبَرْزَخِ وَفِي الْقِيَامَةِ لِكُلِ أَحَدِ So every person will be tested to some degree or another in this world, in the grave, and on the last day, on the day of judgment. وَلَكِنَ الْمُؤْمِنْ أَخَفُ مِحْنَةً وَأَسْهَلُ بَلِيَّةً However, reinforcing what he already mentioned, the believer will have a lighter test. And he will have a simpler, an easier hardship that he endures. 
فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَدْفَعُ عَنْهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his iman and according to the level of his iman protects him from a great deal of harm. وَيَحْمِلُ عَنْهُ بِهِ And on account of his iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes many calamities that befall him quickly. وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ وَالثَّبَاتِ وَالرَّضَ وَالتَّسْلِيمِ مَا يُحَوِّنُ بِهِ عَلَيْهِ مِحْنَتَهِ And furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reinforces a person with patience and resolve and contentment and taslim and surrendering to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has foreordained to such a degree that it makes his hardship easier for him to bear. وَأَمَا الْكَافِرْ وَالْمُنَافِقْ والفاجر, as for the disbeliever, or the hypocrite, or the wicked person, فَتَشْتَدُّ مِحْنَتُهُ وَبَلِيَتُهُ وَتَدُومُ Then his calamity and his hardship and his test is something that is more severe, and it is longer lasting. فَمِحْنَةُ الْمُؤْمِنْ خَفِيفَةٌ مُنْقَطِعًا And so in comparison between the believer and the disbeliever in this world, and in the next collectively, the test of the believer is light and it is short-lived. It is light and it is short. It is light, it is simple and it is munqati'ah. It will come to a cessation, it will come to an end. وَمِحْنَةُ الْكَافِرْ وَالْمُنَافِقْ وَالْفَاجِرْ شَدِيدَةٌ مُبْتَصِلًا However, the calamity that befalls and the test that befalls the disbeliever and the munafiq and the hypocrite or the evil person is something that is great in its severity and it is very long lasting. And for the disbelievers and munafiqun it is eternal. فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ حُصُولَ الْأَلَمْ وَالْمِحْنَى لِكُلِّ نَفْسِ And so every person must endure pain and must endure some type of testing and trialing whether they believe or whether they disbelieve. However the believer will encounter some type of pain and hardship in this world, ibtida'an, in the beginning, and it will be short-lived, ثُمَّ تَكُونُ لَهُ الْعَاقِبَةُ عَاقِبَةُ الدُّنْيَ وَالْآخِرَةُ And then the final determination of affairs will be in his favor, in this world and in the next. The tenth of the eleven usul, he says, رَحِمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَهُوَ أَنَا الْإِنسَانِ مَدَنِيٌ بِالطَّبْعَ is that the human being is a social creature. A human being is a social creature. Must, and he prefers and he, to live amongst other people, not to be isolated. And he, the human being finds an uns, and he finds comfort and needs to live around other people. So they can, and he, so, and he for the reasons that people live around each other for for prosperity and for business and trade and so on and so forth. He must intermingle with others. He is madani, bitaba, and he is a city creature, an urban dweller, if you will. Bitaba, by nature. La Buddha lahu an yaisha ma'annas. And he must live alongside and with other people. When nasu lahum iradatun utasawwarat wa itiqadat. And people have different types of things that they want and desire. And people have different types of perceptions and understandings and different beliefs. فَيَطْلُبُونَ مِنْهُ أَنْ يُوَافِقَهُمْ عَلَيْهَا And so they expect from those that cohabitate in the land that they live in, and that they come into contact with them, to agree with them and to cooperate with them. فَإِن لَمْ يُوَافِقْهُمْ آذَوْهُ وَعَذَّبُوا And if he refuses to agree with them and cooperate with them in their iradat and tasawwarat and i'tiqadat and their beliefs and in their concepts and their perceptions and their desires and ambitions if he refuses آذَوْهُ وَعَذَّبُوهُ And they are going to subject him to abuse and they are going to uh, be a nuisance for him and they are going to find different ways to exact punitive measures and punishment against that person. وَإِنْ وَافَقَهُمْ 
حصل له الأذى والعذاب من جهة من وجه آخر. If he caved and decided to agree with them despite his believing contrary to what they are upon and wanting contrary to what they want. If he caved and just gave in and compromised to what they want and what they believe and their understandings and so on and so forth and pretended to agree with them. He says that if he did that, and then he's going to be tested with what he thought he was escaping by doing that. And he thought that he was going to make things easier for himself. Things will get worse for him. Things will get worse for the person. He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, فَلَا بُدَّ لَهُ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَمُخَالَتَتِهِمْ And he must come into contact with people and intermingle with others. وَلَا يَنْفَكُ عَنْ مُوَافَقَتِهِمْ أَوْ مُخَالَفَتِهِمْ And when he does it, he must either agree with them or disagree with them. وَفِي الْمُوَافَقَةِ أَلَمٌ وَعَذَابٌ And by agreeing with them, he is going to experience all sorts of pain and all sorts of عَذَابٌ even if it's just psychological sometimes. A person... And he just by being around people and being sacked, listening to the foolishness and the stupidness, what they talk about. And he is going to be bothersome and cumbersome for him. And he, if he compromises in his religion, and if he waters down his religion to appease others, he's going to feel the humility of that inside of his heart. He's going to feel the pain of cowardice. He's going to feel the difficulty of having compromised in his religion. He says... So if he agrees with them, he's going to experience some type of alam and adab, some type of alam, some type of pain, and some type of punishment. And he from them or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or both. إِذَا كَانَتْ عَلَى بَاطِلٍ And if he has agreed with them upon falsehood. وَفِي الْمُخَالَفَةِ أَلَمٌ وَعَذَابٍ And if he opposes them, and he is going to encounter some degree of pain, and some degree of punishment from them. They're going to exact some type of punitive measures against him for having disagreed with them and having opposed them. إِذْ لَمْ يُوَافِقْ أَهْوَاءَهُ مُعْتِقَادَتِهِ وَإِرَادَتِهِمْ And if he doesn't agree with their whims and their beliefs and their impulses and their desires, they're going to find a way to make things hard for him and difficult for him. وَلَا رَيْبَ أَنَّ أَلَمَ الْمُخَالَفَةِ لَهُمْ فِي بَاطِلِهِمْ أَسْهَلُ وَأَيْسَرُ مِنَ الْأَلَمَ الْمُتَرَتَّبِ عَلَى مُوَافَقَتِهِمْ And there is no doubt that whatever hardship he encounters and pain or difficulty that he encounters by opposing them in their falsehood is easier and lighter than whatever type of pain comes as a result and a consequence of compromising his religion and agreeing with them in their falsehood. واعتبر هذا بمن يطلبون منه الموافقة على الظلم أو فاحشة أو شهادة زور. He says, look at the situation of those who the people of wickedness or disbelief expect to agree with and cooperate with them in oppressing others or committing fahisha or agreeing to fahisha. And he or just saying that it's permissible and okay. I mean, it's a whole different level now. There was a time, a couple of generations ago, where if a person had a child out of wedlock, they would be so embarrassed that they would give the child up for adoption. I know people personally who were orphans, whose parents were embarrassed, whose mother was embarrassed because they were born out of wedlock. They said in those days, if you impregnated a girl, just a generation or two ago, if you impregnated a girl, or three ago, I mean, if you impregnated a girl, that you would do one of two things. You would have a shotgun marriage, and that the father and the male relatives would make sure that you married that girl before the child was born, right? Or you would join the military. And you would get out of town. So it's either marriage or exile. Now today, they've taken it Ten steps past that. 
If you don't agree with homosexual marriage, if you don't agree with transgender people, if you don't agree, it's on a level of, of absurdity that a person that nobody could have imagined just 20 or 30 years ago that it would have reached, it would have reached as quickly. And we complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say that if you don't agree with this, they may accuse you of hate speech. They say that this is a, a, a civil rights violation. And it may be a federal hate crime. And he, in another 10 years or 15 years or even shorter than that, that these people keep going in the direction that they're going. And in some countries they consider it to be child abuse. If you teach your children that, homosexuality is immoral. Many countries in Europe, they consider it to be child abuse. That can warrant you being monitored by the authorities and perhaps having your children taken away because you are an abusive parent for teaching that homosexuality is immoral. And so he says, look at the situation of those who are expected to agree with oppression or lewdness or false testimony. Or it is expected from them to aid others in doing what is haram. If a person doesn't agree with them, doesn't go along, then they abuse that person. They publicly shame the person, humiliate the person, show hostility and enmity to the person, oppress the person. However, if the believer is patient and fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will have an aqibah. The final determination of affairs will be in his favor. If, on the other hand, he went along with that, and agreed with that to get away from the discomfort of opposing those people and being against those people and the evil that they were calling to and promoting and so on and so forth. Then after that initial stage of agreement and cooperating with them and so on and so forth, and he will be tested with a pain that is even greater than what he had originally fled from and ran away from and a hardship and a difficulty that was even greater than what he thought he was escaping. And normally what happens is that those people are given authority over that individual and domination over that individual. And so he encounters hardship and difficulty many times beyond whatever temporary fleeting pleasure he experienced by agreeing with them in the first place. So understanding this point, this tenth point, and being mindful of it and observing it in your life is from the best and most beneficial things for the worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point so when Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala begins uh, the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu itself in the book Zad al-Ma'ad, which is like five volumes long or so, in the book Zad al-Ma'ad, which is about the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu in all affairs of religion, and there's a whole volume just about the medicine of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in the last, or the second to last, but not the last volume, depending on the printing, and he, when he begins the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu and explaining the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu If you want to understand all of the seerah, this is your entryway into the seerah. What he mentions here is almost verbatim, word for word what he mentions there. As the gateway into understanding the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the mechanics of the sunnah. If a person wants to understand what is entailed, and following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not compromising pertaining the truth and let him understand what is being mentioned here the last matter is to put everything into perspective 
And he mentions that there are four types of things that are the worst case situation what a person could be tested with. And he mentions out of these four things the reality of it. The reality of it and how the worst case situation the worst case situation of you being tested because of your religion is something light and easy in reality. In the scope of things and in, and in perspective. He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that the affliction that the believer is stricken with for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he is categorizable, can be categorized in four categories, there are four different types of tests. فَإِنَّهُ إِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَفِي مَالِهِ وَفِي عَرْضِهِ وَفِي أَهْلِهِ وَمَنْ يُحِبْ He could be tested pertaining his life, he could lose his life. Or he could be tested in his money, it will have negative impact upon his finances and his money for sticking up for the truth and abiding by the truth and not compromising and so on and so forth. Or in his reputation, may harm his reputation. He may be spoken ill of, slandered, lied against. Or the ahlihi wa man yuhib. It may affect his family. He may be tested pertaining his family, his wife and his children, and he wants spouse, children, general family. Wamen yuhib, or their loved ones in general. فَالَّذِي فِي نَفْسِهِ قَدْ يَكُونُ بِتَلَفِهَا تَارَ وَبِتَأَلُّمِهَا بِدُونِ التَّلَفِ فَهَذَا مَجْمُوعُ مَا يُبْتَلَى بِهِ الْعَبْدُ فِي اللَّهِ is being tested, tested in his person, in his life, could be his being destroyed. And he mean his life being taken. His life being taken. Or something that is less than that, being injured or wounded, beaten, something of the sort. He says, this is collectively what people are tested with. In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he, because of this religion. And the most severe of these scenarios is to lose your life. It's to lose your life. So when once you hear what he explains about a person losing their life for the sake of the religion. And how the affair is an easy matter in, in reality. That a person dies for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great Imam Abu Bakr al-Tartusi. Somebody wanted to kill him once for praying according to the sunnah. Another Muslim saw him praying according to the sunnah and wanted to murder him. <laughs> because he was a fanatic, you know. He wanted to murder this Imam of the Sunnah for praying according to the Sunnah. He said, Woman ana hata uqtal fillah. He says, And who am I that I would deserve to be killed for the sake of Allah? Who am I that I would deserve to be killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when a person looks at the worst case situation, then everything else becomes light. His being tested in his money or giving some of his money. His being tested in his family. His being tested in his reputation or honor. All of these things are really light. When looking at the reward that a person gets. وَمِنَ الْمَعَلُومِ He said it is well known that everyone is going to die. وَغَيَةُ هَذَا الْمُؤْمِنِ and you stashhad fillah. And the highest thing that can happen is that he is martyred 
وتلك أشرف الموتات وأسهلها. And this is the most honorable death and the easiest death, the death of the martyr. فإنه لا يجد الشهيد من الألم إلا مثل علم القرصة. What he feels of pain, the martyr, is like the pricking of a needle. It's like the pricking of a needle. فليس في قتل الشهيد مصيبة زائدة على ما هو معتاد بني آدم. And in general, his death doesn't involve any type of hardship that is beyond the normal deaths of human beings. The normal death of a human being. فمن عدى مصيبة هذا القتل أعظم من مصيبة الموت على الفراش فهو جاهل. Whoever considers the calamity of being killed because of your religion to be greater and more severe than the calamity and the hardship of dying upon your deathbed, reaching old age and dying on your deathbed. Whoever thinks that it's easier to die of old age on your deathbed or of sickness or whatever reason than to be killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is jahil. A person is ignorant. بَلْ مَوْتُ الشَّهِيدِ مِنْ أَيْسَرِ الْمَيْتَاتِ وَأَفْضَلُهَا وَعَلَاهَا Or rather, the death of the person who dies is a martyr. And he is the highest and loftiest type of death. وَلَكِنَ الْفَارِ يَظُنُّ أَنَّهُ بِفِرَارِهِ يُطَوِّلُ عُمُرَهِ However, the person who flees thinks that by doing so, he will prolong his life. فَيَتَمَتَّعُ بِالْعَيْشِ And that he will continue to enjoy his life even longer. That what he gets is to enjoy his life. And of course this is speaking primarily about the actual battlefield and the situation where there is legislative and a conflict happening. He says, حَيْثُ يَقُولُ However the situation is relevant for all Muslims in all times as we'll come to see. As much as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown this person to have a false understanding of the situation. When he said, قُلْ لَنْ يَنْفَعُكُمُ الْفِرَارُ إِنْ فَرَارْتُمْ Say that fleeing will not benefit you were you to flee. Fleeing will not benefit you if you were to flee. إِنْ فَرَارْتُمْ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ أو الْقَتْلِ If you were to flee from death or from being killed, Fleeing will not benefit you. وَإِذًا لَا تُمَتَّعُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And in that situation, you would only enjoy yourself for a short, I and mean, a short amount after that. Life is like the blinking of an eye. Your death is going to come in a moment anyways. This is reality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informed that the person fleeing from being a martyr will not benefit him. فَلَا فَائِدَةَ فِيهِ There's no benefit in that. وَأَنَّهُ لَوْ نَفَعَ لَمْ يَنْفَعْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And that if there is some trivial benefit, that it is very little. إِذْ لَا بُدَّ لَهُ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ فَيَفُوتُهُ بِهَاذَا الْقَلِيلِ مَا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِنْهُ وَأَنْفَعَ Because he's going to die anyway. Because he's going to die anyway. Doesn't mean that the person is looking for opportunities to get killed as a Muslim, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, لا ينبغي للمؤمن أن يذل نفسه يتعرض للبلاء فيما لا يطيق It's not befitting for the believer to humiliate himself by subjecting himself to be tested in a manner that he cannot bear. But he's making a larger point here that if this is the case with the worst case situation the worst case situation is that you will lose your life for your religion. It's unlikely to happen in our situation, right? Allah knows best. And if we're, but our current situation, that's very highly unlikely to happen. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And the point is that what about giving what is less than your life?
So the point that he's explaining here is that if that's the case with giving your life, sacrificing your life for the religion, if a person was to find themselves in a situation, they could die in defense of their religion, or they could flee, they could run. There would be no benefit in running. They give the ultimate sacrifice and they live the life of a martyr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever. What benefit would they get by some extra days eating and drinking and enjoying the company of their family and so on and so forth? And they could have had all those great rewards and tremendous rewards that come from martyrdom. So what about what is less than that? Is the point that he's making. What about what is less than that? When it comes to sacrificing, being tested with wealth, sacrificing wealth and giving wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being tested in your honor or your reputation. Some people won't speak up for the truth or defend the truth because they're afraid of what other people will say. Being tested pertaining to your family, being tested pertaining to your loved ones. And these sorts of things, and he is nothing compared to a person losing their life. He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says, after that verse that we just heard in Surah Al Hazab, which is verse number 16 or verse number 17, He says, 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 who could ever protect you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he wanted to punish you? Or if he wanted to show you mercy? Who could prevent that? And they will never find any ally or any helper for them against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us here that the Servant cannot be protected by anyone against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in arada bihi su'an ghayran mawta ladhi farra minhu. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to punish him and afflict him with something other than the death that he was fleeing from in this situation. The situation of and what happened during the battle of the Khandaq battle of the Ahzab that we mentioned earlier. فَإِنَّهُ فَرَّ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ لَمَّا كَانَ يَسُؤُهُ Because of his dislike of death, he fled from it. فَأَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ أَنَّهُ لَوْ أَرَادَ بِهِ سُؤًا غَيْرَهُ لَمْ يَعْصِمْهُ أَهَدُ مِنَ اللَّهِ So Allah informed him that if any other bad thing were intended for him, that no one could protect him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can protect him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّهُ قَدْ يَفِرُّ مِمَا يَسُؤُهُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَيَقَعُ فِيمَا يَسُؤُهُ مِمَا هُوَ أَعْظَمُ مِنْهُ This is Allah building the morale of the believers at this time. Informing them that if they, are, if they have the urge to flee from something that is upsetting to them, of being killed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then something else that is upsetting to them, that is even worse, may afflict them of their losing the opportunity to die, the most honorable death, and the end, and he, uh, receive the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other things that may occur thereafter. He said, وَإِذَا كَانَ هَذَا فِي مُصِيبَةِ النَّفْسِ فَالْأَمْرُ هَكَذَا فِي مُصِيبَةِ الْمَالِ وَالْعِرْضِ وَالْبَدَنِ He says, if this is the reality of being put to trial by having your life taken, then the same can be said pertaining being tried in your wealth or in your honor and reputation or in your body. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ بَخِلَ بِمَالِهِ أَنْ يُنْفِقَهُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَعِلَائِ كَلِمَتِهِ سَلَبَهُ اللَّهُ إِيَّا Because the person, he says, who is stingy and spending his wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah to make Allah's religion uppermost and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take his wealth from him. 
أو قيض له إنفاقه فيما لا ينفعه دنيا ولا أخرى. Allah may preordain that that person who refused to spend that wealth for something that will benefit him in the hereafter, for the sake of Allah's religion. Allah may preordain and decree that that person spends his wealth in a way that will not benefit him now or later. Will not benefit him in this world nor in the hereafter. بَلْ فِيمَا يَعُودُ عَلَيْهِ بِمَضَرَّتِهِ عَاجِلًا وَآجِلًا But instead will bring about harm for him in an immediate sense in this world and in an eventual sense in the hereafter. فَإِن وَإِنْ حَبِسَهُ وَادَّخَّرَهُ مَنَعَهُ وَتَمَتُّ عَبِيهِ So if the person, and if the person doesn't spend the money on that which will harm him, and he saves it, and he hoards it, and he stores it away, then he will not have enjoyed his wealth. He will die without having enjoyed his wealth. وَنَقَلَهُ إِلَى غَيْرِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the wealth that that person had refused to spend for his sake to somebody else to enjoy from his inheritors or whoever gets his money after his death. فَيَكُونُ لَهُ مَهْنَأُهُ وَعَلَى مُخَلِّفِهِ وَزْرُهُ So the person who refused to spend in a mandatory fashion in support of the religion gets the wizard, and he gets the sin and the burden of that money that he left behind that he did not use in a way that was legislated. And the person who gets it, they get the mahna of it. They get to enjoy it. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ رَفَّهَ بَدَنَهُ وَعِرْضَهُ وَآثَرَ رَاحَتَهُ عَلَى الطَّعَبِ لِلَّهِ وَفِي سَبِيلِهِ The same can be said about a person who wants to primp their body or who is overly concerned with their reputation. And they prefer raha, they prefer relaxation over a ta'ab lillah wa fi sabilihi. Over being exhausted for the sake of Allah and in the path of Allah. At'abahu Allahu subhanahu adh'afa dhalika fi ghayri sabilihi wa marvatihi. Such a person will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by exhausting his body many times beyond any effort that he could have given for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person is going to work like a donkey. He's going to work like a mule. You find people, they work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And they don't have 20, 30, 40 minutes for something that will benefit their self in the hereafter. They don't give the smallest effort pertaining, exhausting their self, fatiguing their self for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and so, a person who refuses to exhaust himself in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make that person exhaust himself many times over and something that is not pleasing to him. وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ يَعْرِفُهُ النَّاسْ بِالتَّجَارِبِ And this is something that the people know by way of experience and first-hand knowledge. قال أبو حازم أبو حازم سلم ابن دينار أبو حازم he said لما يلقى الذي لا يتقي لها من معالجة الخلق أعظم مما يلقى الذي يتقي لها من معالجة التقوى that the difficulty a person experiences who doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the difficulty that a person experiences in dealing with people the person, the difficulty that a, that, that a person who doesn't fear Allah experiences in dealing with people is greater than the difficulty that the person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encounters by practicing a taqwa. وَاعْتَبِرْ ذَلِكَ بِحَالِ إِبْلِيسِ He said, you have no further to look than the situation of Iblis. The situation of Iblis. If you want to understand how when a person refuses to use their energy and their wealth and their life and their reputation and what Allah has endowed them with to endear their self to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to support the religion of Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they will use those things one way or another. They will lose their life with no benefit, to no avail. Their money will be lost with no benefit, spent with no benefit. Their reputation, and he, when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be the lowest of creatures with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the things they thought they were sparing by refusing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were tested with the opposite. The scholars, they say, this is the opposite of the principle that whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with what is better. Likewise, the person who leaves off what will benefit him will have that thing replaced with what is harmful. I mean, jinsihi, that is just like it. And he, it will be replaced with what is harmful, that is of its same uh, qualities and characteristics. iblis. You have no far, further to look than the situation of Iblis. فَإِنَّهُمْ تَنَعَ مِنَ السُّجُولِ آدَمْ فِيرَارًا مِنَ يَخْضَعَ لَهُ وَيَظِلِّ He refused to make prostration for Adam, to bow to Adam out of respect for Adam and worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeying the order of Allah's worship as a sign of respect for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam that Allah ordered the creatures to show this type of respect for Adam. When he refused to do so, trying to escape, showing humility for Adam, or feeling any type of lowliness in front of Adam, and when Iblis sought to honor himself by Refusing to humble herself in front of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, in obedience to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Sayyarahu Allahu adhal al Because he refused to show warranted humility to Adam who was better than him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the lowest of the low. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the lowest of the low. Pay attention to this point. وَجَعَلَهُ خَادِمًا لِأَهْلِ الْفُسُوقِ وَالْفُجُورِ مِنْ ذُرِيَّتِهِ And he made the shaytan the servant of the most wicked of Adam's children. He made shaytan be the servant as a punishment of the most wicked of Adam's children. He didn't want to show honor to Adam, who Allah had honored. And so as a punishment, he was made to be a servant, to humiliate himself for the entirety of his existence before the day of judgment, up until the day Yama Yubathun, up until the day that they will be resurrected. And Iblis would disavow them to be the servant of the most denigrated and worse of the sons of Adam, of the progeny and offspring of Adam. فَصَيَّرَهُ اللَّهُ أَذَلَّ الْأَذَلِّينَ وَجَعَلَهُ خَادِمًا لِأَهْلِ الْفُسُوقِ وَالْفُجُورِ مِنْ ذُرِيَّتِهِ فَلَمْ يَرْضَ بِالسُّجُودِ لَهُ وَالرَّضِي أَنْ يَخْدُمَ هُوَ وَبَنُوهُ فُسَاقَ ذُرِيَّتِهِ So he wasn't pleased with showing respect to Adam and having humility in front of Adam. So as a punishment, he became pleased with serving the fusaq of the dhuriyah and the sinful ones of the progeny of Adam. وَكَذَلِكَ عُبَّارُ الْأَصْنَامِ Likewise could be said about those who worship idols. أَنِفُوا أَنْ يَتَّبِعُوا رَسُولًا مِنَ الْبَشَرِ They refused to follow a human being who was a prophet. They said, why won't Allah send an angel as a prophet? They had all these iqtirahat, all these sorts of suggestions. Why would, all, why would Allah not send a king or an angel or, or, or? Why wouldn't He give him this type of miracle or that or the third? They weren't satisfied with their miracles. They weren't satisfied with their status. They refused to follow people that they felt themselves to be above. 
وأن يعبد وأن يعبد إلها واحدا سبحانا and they refuse to worship a single deity سبحانه وتعالى the true deity in perfection سبحانه وتعالى والرضو أن يعبد آلهة من الأحجار so as a punishment they found themselves contented to worship idols made of stone وَكَذَلِكَ كُلُّ مَنْ امْتَنَ عَنْ يَضِلَّ لِلَّهِ أَوْ يَبْضُلَ مَا لَهُ فِي مَرْضَاتِهِ أَوْ يُطْعِبَ نَفْسَهُ وَبَدَنَهُ فِي طَاعَتِهِ The same can be said about anyone who, refused to humble, who refuses to humble their self for Allah or to sacrifice what they have for the sake of Allah or to exhaust their self and their body in obedience to Allah لَبُدَ أَنْ يَضِلَّ لِمَنْ لَا يَسْتَوِي then they are going to find their self in the service, humili- lowering their self and humiliating their self for someone who is incomparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَبْذُلَ لَهُ مَالَ And sacrificing their wealth for those people. وَيُطْعِبَ نَفْسَهُ وَبَدَنَهُ فِي طَاعَتِهِ وَمَرْضَاتِهِ And whereas they refused to use their wealth and their life and their body to obey Allah and please Allah, they will find their self using their wealth and their body to obey those people and to seek the good pleasure of those people. عُقُوبَةً لَهُ As a punishment from Allah for that person. كَمَا قَالَ بَعْضُ salaf As some of the salaf they said, مَنْ امْتَنَى عَنْ يَمْشِي مَعَ أَخِيهِ خَطَوَاتٍ فِي حَاجَتِهِ أَمْشَاهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَكْثَرَ مِنْهَا فِي غَيْرِ طَاعَتِهِ The person who refuses to walk side, to walk alongside his Muslim brother, a few short steps to help him with a need of his, will be caused by Allah to walk much further than that in something that does not involve obedience to Allah. And in disobedience to Allah meaning. And the person who refuses to help his Muslim brother with a small effort will be made to and he use their energies in a way that does not involve obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. These are the 11 points, the 11 principles and concepts that a person needs to observe in dealing with the trials of life. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.